thankful for what God has already done for us. And it's good to be able to look to him to bring us through our storm. Let us bow the word of prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for uh, your blessings and your provision and your power and your presence, Lord. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to hide me behind thy cross, to allow it to be all of thee and none of me. Forgive me, Lord. Put me in a state where I can be used by you. Heavenly Father, I ask that these words be your words, that they strengthen us as believers, that we may continue to tell a dying world that we do serve a living Savior. But we do ask you, Father, that for someone in the midst who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that the Spirit may prick their heart with the word, that they may come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Be careful to point them to your darling son, Jesus, who died for our sins. But we thank you, Father, that you got him out of the grave and you may be justified in your sight. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. A passage of scripture this morning, you uh, don't realize the confirmation that I got uh, through our Sunday school lesson and uh, through the comments. Y'all don't know, y'all was all up in the sermon today. Amen. So I hope not to be long uh, with that in mind. But the passage of scripture is found in uh, Colossians chapter 2, uh, verses 13 and 14. That's uh, Colossians chapter 2, uh, verses 13 and 14. This is our communion Sunday, amen. So I want to try to <clears throat> uh, get through so we can get to our commune. I don't want to hold you long, but that's uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, when you have it, wave your hand, amen. I see you, Sister KK, amen. Wave your hand and say amen. And thank God for your husband, I see him leaving out, amen. We gonna pray for him, yes, yeah. Uh, Colossians chapter two, verses 13 and 14, they read as follows. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Just uh, for a few moments, this this morning, I hope to uh, challenge us from the thought, don't forget what Jesus did. Don't forget what Jesus did. Uh, we are truly entering uh, a lot of pastors and preachers like to call uh, our resurrection season. And I found that there is a tendency uh, for us to become comfortable in where we are. Uh, to the point, Reverend Mack, that we forget from whence we came. We allow spiritual amnesia to set in. And because of the many blessings that we now enjoy, we lose sight of where God has brought us from. And, and, and I found, uh, Pastor Holly, that this is a dangerous place to be as believers uh, because it causes us to ignore, overlook, and forget the grace and mercies of God. David said, Sister Holly, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You see, when, when we forget, uh, we start to look down on others and start judging them because they're not where we are or where we think they should be. As, as believers, it's important that we 
always reflect back, or as Deacon Dozier often says, uh, look back over that long, lonesome road in order that we may always have before us where we were, where we are, and who it was that brought us out. In, in, in this chapter, uh, Sister Bridges, Paul is addressing uh, the dangers of allowing the things uh, uh, that this world values to supersede and overshadow the value of Jesus Christ and what he did out on Calvary. You see, I, I, found, I found that when we get a, a, a little education, uh, we think that believing uh, Jesus fed 5,000 with two fish and five, five barley loaves is a stretch. Yeah, a, a fairy tale almost. Uh, because of our education, uh, we, we, we start thinking that Jesus uh, being born of a virgin is, is a little far-fetched. And there must be another explanation to what happened. Our education, yeah, will, will cause us uh, to, to dumb down and, and dilute the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The things that the world values, church, yeah, we, we get a little money, amen, and, and we think we made it. We think, amen, that we have, we have arrived and we start relying and trusting more in the money than we do in the Lord. Yeah, but just, just like the parable, we'll, we'll eat, we'll, we'll drink, we'll enjoy ourselves, we'll put God on the back burner, amen. But just as the parable says, there will come a time when the Lord may speak and say, oh fool, this night thy soul is required of thee. So, 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 so here, so here, uh, Paul, amen, tries to refocus our attention on what's important. Paul, he, he, he reminds us in, in the first part of this 13th verse uh, where we were. Yeah, he, he says, he says, and, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your, of your flesh. It, it's funny, it's, it's funny, it's funny, uh, Sister, Sister Doja, how, how we walk around now yeah, with, with our uh, long spiritual nose looking down at folk, amen, and, and making them uh, think that we've been saved all of our lives. Yeah, we, 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 put, this, we put this facade on Brother Montgomery, amen, that, that we've, been, we've been holy since birth. Yeah, yeah, one, one, of the worst, one of the worst things we can do as believers is to allow people to see their current product, hmm, without expressing and explaining the production that brought us where we are. I need somebody to help me this morning. Uh, a lot of times, amen, we, we, we care uh, too much about folks' opinion and not enough about their souls. Yeah, we, we want people to see us now all cleaned up, suited up, tied up, dressed, nice big church hat. We, we, want, to, we want them to see us now. Amen. But we don't want uh, them to know about how when we were on drugs and alcohol and how God brought us out. Yeah, we, we want folks to see uh, our marriage now. Uh, 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 but don't want folks to know about all the hell we had to deal with with our spouses before God stepped in and made everything, everything all right. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all good now. But the truth of the matter is we were all dead in our sins and the uncircumcision of our, of our flesh. Yeah, the flesh is that old corrupt nature and, and it's uncircumcision indicates that it's not been cut off, controlled or conquered. Yeah, Paul, Paul said on one occasion when I, when I choose to do good, evil is always always present. You see, it was, it was when we were in a hopeless situation, dead 
in our sins, constantly led by the desires of our flesh, doing what was right in our own eyes when God stepped in. Paul said on one occasion, God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The text, the text, Paul says, Paul says he has, he has quickened together with him. You see, before we were partakers in the newness of life, which we received from Christ Jesus, we were not sick, amen, because sick indicates that we needed a doctor, amen, but we were dead, which indicates we needed a savior. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no today, amen, that, 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 that our hopeless situation are an opportunity and a chance for God to perform a miracle in our lives. Yeah, that, that mountain, amen, that we've been looking at uh, for the last couple of days is nothing more than an opportunity uh, for us to see that God has the power to turn a mountain into a highway that will lead us to our blessing. That sickness, amen, that we have been toiling over and, and dealing with is nothing more than a chance uh, for God to show he can be a doctor in a sick room. The giant, amen, that we've been staring at, wondering how we are going to conquer is nothing more than a chance, church, amen, for us to see that there's nothing too hard for God. God, he, he, he made us alive with Christ. But can I tell you, he did it through, through a process. Paul, Paul says, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of here, y'all. Y'all bear with me. But Paul, Paul says, having, having forgive you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. Trespass, uh, Ram Terrell suggests that we, we've overstepped God's boundaries in our sin and rebellion against him. Because of our, of our nature, uh, Deacon Gentries and, and our forefather, Adam, uh, and, and the DNA that we were born with, we became sinners. And it's in our nature to go against everything that God stands for. It's in our blood uh, to do what appeals to the flesh. And, and so here, Paul makes it very plain that we have been forgiven. Not of, of, of some, not of, of a few, uh, not of, of the ones that don't seem so bad. You know, I, I'm so glad that, that God's forgiveness ain't like man's forgiveness. Man, a man, will forgive you for some small things, but won't forgive you with, for, for, for what he considers those big things. But here, Paul is stressing to us, amen, that we have been forgiven all. I want y'all to say it with me because it sounds good. All our, our trespasses, not just the ones that we consider little, but also the ones that are, hmm. The text says, he, he blotted out hmm, the handwriting whew, that was against us. You, you know, church, we, we live in a society where everybody, has something to say about everything. And, 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 and because of, of this, we, we spend most of our day checking our feeds just so we can see what folks are saying about who. Yeah, we, 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 we worry, we worry, we worry so, so much about what folks have to say that we're constantly checking Twitter and. And, and Instagram and, and, and Facebook to see uh, how folks react to what we posted. 
Yeah, we're looking to see how many likes and, and thumbs up we can get from, from, from man. Yeah, we, we spend more time reading our social media than we do our body. We, we, would, rather, we would rather want to see uh, what, what sister so-and-so and brother uh, him say got to say uh, rather than to hear what God has to, has to say. Yes, social media will body shame us. But the word of God says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Social media will tell us that we can't overcome our obstacles. Uh, but the word of God says greater is he who that is in me than, than he that is in, in the world. Yeah, church, church is, is gotten it's gotten so so bad uh, that Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter can can start blocking anyone content uh, that they feel is not appropriate. Oh, I want to I want to I want to tell you this morning uh, in in the same in the same way. Yeah, they ain't doing them but copying off what Jesus had already done. Yeah, Jesus, amen, in the same way has blotted out mm, what the world had to say about us. Yeah, yeah, the world, the world, the world says uh, that we are no good and no good thing can come from what God had created. Oh, but I stopped by to tell you this morning that Jesus uh, blotted it out with his precious blood. Woo! Uh, the, world, the world says uh, that we would never amount to anything. Uh, but I stopped by to encourage you uh, that Jesus has come along and blotted out what the world had to say with his precious blood. <laughs> yeah, the world, the world will tell us uh, that we will never uh, be able to survive what we've been through. <laughs> Somebody, a man is dealing with a broken home. Somebody been molested. Somebody is dealing with hatred in their heart. But I stopped by to tell you this morning <laughs> that Jesus has blotted out uh, what the world had to say about you and me with his precious blood. I want to be real with you this morning. I had a debt to pay and a debt that I didn't have enough finances to cover. Yeah, when uh, I, I was younger, I had bill collectors calling my house, telling me you owe this and you owe that. But at the time, I didn't have the money to be able to cancel out my debt. But I'm so glad that one day when I got the funds, I called them up, I said, look here, here's your money, don't call me no more. Can I tell you that we had a debt that no man could pay? A debt that was always over our head, had our account always in the red. Can I tell you there was a debt Oh, that uh, that man could not pay, but I'm so glad. I said I'm oh. so glad that Jesus, my financial doctor, stepped in, took my debt out of the way, took it out on a hill called Calvary, and nailed it to an old rugged cross. For He knew mm, no sins, but He put on my sins, your sins and the sins of the whole wide world. He went out mm, on a hill called Calvary, pay my debt with his precious blood. Out on Calvary, he died that we might have forgiveness for our trespassers. Out on Calvary, Jesus made a way to have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, out on a hill called Calvary, Jesus 
He died, gave up the ghost, laid in a borrowed tomb. Stay there all that Friday. Stay there all that Saturday. He was clearing my debt off the books for good. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Don't forget who brought you out the Mari clay and placed your feet on solid ground. Don't forget who delivered you from the power of darkness and placed you into his marvelous life. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget what Jesus did. Doors of the church are open. You come by letter, candidate for baptism. Don't know who's in eternal life through Jesus Christ. Paul put a bow on it. He said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. As they sing, doors of the church are open. Raise your hand, unmute yourself. If you want to give your life over to Jesus, somebody may be in a backsliding state. Trying to figure out why things ain't, ain't working. Don't forget what Jesus did. Go to the church. Will there be one? He came to blood. Heal and fall. Because he lives, 
I can face the future because he lived. That's why he grows on that we might be able to be justified in the life we now live. We want to thank our sister to the pastor that great message. Certainly, we got to understand that it's all because of the blood of Jesus. Our sins have been blotted out. Blotted out, white, white out. That's what they call in the secretary office, white it out. God white it all out. And by the blood of Jesus. Now we're coming for our, our tithes and offering. After our tithes and offering, we'll be going into our commune service. Going into our commune service. We're going to ask Reverend Price to pray over our tithe. No, just we're going to, we're going to wait to after. Amen. We're coming out. Tithes and offering. Tithes and offering. We certainly are grateful. If you will give, we'll be grateful during these pandemic times. We just so appreciate the one that's sending a tithes and offering in. And we just thank you because we need it as we go on this journey. We need it. We need it. So many churches are closing down. Amen. Can't afford it, but we, when times go right, we still going to be on this corner by the help of the Lord, could we trust in him that we can praise his holy name. Thank you for the message once again, Bridget. Thank you for the song. Thank you for the Sunday school lesson. All have inspired me to be a better, better servant for God. Now we're getting ready for our communion service. Amen. Get ready for our communion service. Amen. The blood. I'm, I'm going to ask.